Hey guys, it's your old pal Jerry here. I thought I'd take a break from playing Resident Evil on the Wii to bring you the next round of the Poor Reenactor's Guide to Swords. Um, so, last time I showed you the Indian sword, which was horrible. Uh, this time I want to show you a sword that might have a little bit more promise. Um, and that would be... This one. This is a sword, or I suppose you might call it a dagger, um, however you want to call it, that I got for $15 new. Uh, given I took advantage of the whole best offer on eBay, I think it goes for $20. Uh, and this is known as the, uh, if you look on eBay, it's called the Sultan Ar Sultan's Arabic Dream Destiny Sword thing. I'll post a link to it. Uh, it's about 20 I think I've seen it as high as $22. There's a few other ones that look similar to it. Um, so this one has a pretty straight that does get slightly wider, but it doesn't have this huge curve that comes down to the end. That's how you to distinguish it. Um, and so I wanted to tell you a little bit about this. Um, first of all, I want to tell you why I got it in the first place. And that is um, when I started Corvus Cohort, uh, 1500s reenacting group, the first event that we ever did was to recreate Conquistadors. And I love Conquistadors, personal favorite of mine, plan on writing a book, all that fun stuff. Uh, and I read uh, Vargas Machuca's um, Guide to the Indian Militia, uh, which is basically a how-to guide for Conquistadors, and he off just offhandedly mentioned uh, the blade called an alfange, or alfange, I'm not sure how to pr properly pronounce it. Um, and basically, upon looking that up, it's like a scimitar dagger. And I thought that would be a cool talking point, so I went and saw what I could find, and I found this one. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is perfect! Uh, I actually kept it on later on when we were brought in to do a 1600s uh, buccaneer impression uh, as a talking point for the, um, the uh, North African pirates. Uh, so, I know they're not buccaneers, I just, it was a talking point, <laughs> I just wanted to cover that. Um, so, when I opened this up, the first thing I noticed was that it didn't have a scabbard. It's fine, fine by me. Um, in fact, it looks really cool without the scabbard anyway. Um, so I was, I wasn't bugged, it was a, it was a very, very affordable price. Um, the other thing I noticed when you pick it up, this is very solid. It's not wibbly wobbly, I can't believe I made that reference. Um, there's no, you know, nut off the bottom, meaning that it's a very solid, um, blade through the handle. The metal part in here, the tang, the tang is actually very solid, which is nice. Uh, brass cross guard actually has a little decorative S on it, so it's not just a straight knife guard. Um, but there was one big issue for me, and... You can kind of see that I covered it up with this leather, but let me uh, take a minute to fiddle with this, see if I can pull all this off, and you'll understand why I covered it. Baha! Done. You can see it has the, I suppose you'd call it ergonomic. Uh, grip. I'm not really sure if that's a proper word for it. I'm not this the reason I'm not familiar with it is because that's a very modern Thing to have on a knife see how the the grips there form to your fingers as you grab it That's a very modern thing to have on a weapon period blades in the 1500s uh, And given for most centuries didn't have it I'm sure someone out there is gonna have some outlier sword where yeah, they did have it See here's one example kept in some random museum. Yes, okay I'm sure that there are examples of it out there um, but it certainly was not the norm. Uh, so I saw that and I was like, oh boy, I've got to cover that up. That's wrong. Uh, so I wrapped it in leather. And this is kind of that, that leather cord you can get at the supermarket in the crafting aisle for 10 bucks. So I got that uh, and wrapped it up and there's plenty of leather left over. So, um, issue crisis averted, right? Um, so I, I then went on and realized, and I realized I wanted to keep this as an, uh, alfange, um, replica for my impression, and uh, I realized that I couldn't really find any images of one. You know, there's a few things here and there, and they, they looked different. They looked more like a short dusik. They didn't have this little lip here. Um, 
until I recently came across a picture from the early 1500s of a German, uh, and I'll post that here too. I'll probably overlay it over the video if I'm handy enough to do that. Uh, and it's basic. It look. It's a guy kind of doing this from the back, and you can you can see it pretty much looks exactly like this. So um, the grip was a little different, but I'm very excited to have come across that uh, to show a blade like this was in use in Europe in the 1500s. Now there's one thing that I did want to point out. I was under the impression that this had the false edge on this corner, um, but you can see it's just a solid thing. So this kind of bump here has no use, if you will. Uh, it did come to me sharp, so I did have to dull it. I dull all my blades when I use them for demonstrations. Um, but yeah, I, I really like this. If anything, it is a great sword that you can practice um, Dusik stances with if you're into Hema. Uh, so it, it, it's very solid, it's very heavy, um, but in a good way. You feel like this is a, a, a blade that can actually be useful. Uh, so I think that's what that's it. Keep an eye on the links. I'm gonna uh, post a link to this. I'm gonna post some of the pictures that I found. Um, I may be able to find Vargas Machuca's uh, guide, the Conquistador guide. So that's all I have for now. Um, catch you guys next time.